Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and uh, by now you've seen me try out Sing Tao, the Chinese beer, because that's the other kind of well-known bit of booze from Blade Runner. Uh, I've talked about the um, classic Johnny Walker on the left, and also the Johnny Walker that came out for 2049, and I'm guessing some of you are thinking, how did he make that Sing Tao bottle? That's what this video is. Now, Sing Tao was actually done in a Smirnoff Dazar uh, 80s bottle, which uh, is very sexy, very nice, and unfortunately very hard to find. I've looked on eBay, and that thing goes for several hundred dollars, even empty. I have a feeling because of its connection to Blade Runner, everybody wants to get the Smirnoff Dazar bottle, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not forking over major cash. I mean, I did for these two because well, the one on the left was uh, the classic iconic drink that was uh, that uh, Deckard has, and the one on the right was a rare collector's item. So yeah, okay, totally not a problem dropping a bit of cash on that. But for uh, an obscure bottle that I have to hack into being a Tsing Tao bottle for the sake of a very short reference in the original film, no, I'm not forking over big cash for that. Now. There have been a couple of really good forum threads about how to make a Tsing Tao bottle. And one of them, I'm going to put a link below, but uh, one of them pointed me in the right direction and said, Hey, um, there are some bottles that are kind of similar in shape to the Smirnoff Dazar bottle. One of which is the thing that I'm actually going to convert into my Tsing Tao bottle now. And it is Metaxa. Uh, this is a Greek liqueur, and we have uh, emptied the bottle out. It was kind of tasty and nice, something different. The nice thing about it, though, is it has that bent shape and the kind of fluted bottom. Very similar to the Smirnoff Dazar. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's not the same, but for the sake of uh, comparison, I'll be happy enough just to live with that. And it cost me 30 bucks with booze in it, which I have since drunk, so... I've enjoyed myself. Uh, now, let's turn this into a Tsing Tao bottle. So the first step, we've got to get this label off here because we need essentially a blank glass bottle. Uh, I'm going to leave the very top the way it is because that's actually not far off how it appears in the film. And it's kind of handy. Having had some uh, lack of success with the top of Blade Runner bottles before, I'm leaving that. Again, this isn't going to be movie accurate. What's more important is i got to get this label off here. And several um, YouTube videos and websites have recommended what you got to do is uh, dunk the bottle in a container with a whole bunch of baking soda. So, I've got a um, little thing here that luckily this bottle will just sit nicely inside of. So we're going to fill the bottle itself with some hot water, and we're going to set it in here and submerge it, and then add some baking soda. Keep it from uh, floating. And I'm going to add some scoops of Arm & Hammer baking soda. Uh, most sources online have said uh, something like five or six teaspoons worth. What the heck, we'll do a sixth one for good measure. Right, and then essentially we just want to let that sit for a while. Now I'm just going to give it a good, get it nice and milky in there. I'll probably uh, pour a bit more hot water in there later, but. Depending on different types of bottles and stuff, I've heard everything from three hours to overnight. I guess I'll come back in three hours and see how uh, easy it is to peel this label off. Alright, been about an hour and it's not very warm in there now. So I'm just boiled the kettle and I'm just going to top this up a little bit with some really hot stuff. Just to get it nice and active. Ooh. Oh, wow. Hey, actually, if you look inside there, that label's waggling free. So we're actually kind of getting there already. Hey, this is going to work out really well. All right. Well, let's 
Let's give it another little while. All right, well, it's not even two hours later. This is still, there's a bit of lukewarm temperature there, but I think this is done. In fact, <laughs> look at that. It just fell right off. It's completely clean. There you go. There's the two labels just sitting in there. So we'll just uh, dump them out. And yeah. Wow, that was a cinch. I have my bottle prepared. I didn't even, there's like, there's no residue. Excellent. Very, very pleased with that. Yeah. Now, that's the easy part. And now comes the hard part. We gotta take this very nice blank bottle and turn it into closer to what it appears like in the film. Um, the good news is I'm actually kind of there already. I could almost call it a day because the bottle that um, Deckard gets from the street vendor is essentially a blank uh, uh, Smirnoff Dazar bottle. I mean, there's no markings on it or anything, so I'm kind of done. I could call it a day, but uh, no, to give this a distinctive Blade Runner kind of a look, what I want to do is there's a really good uh, props forum thread that talks about these bottles where the guys go through and they spot all the different bottles uh, of this type, these Tsingtao bottles, in Blade Runner. It's actually, it appears in a few background scenes in different colors. There's yellow ones, there's blue ones, etc. And the guys have done a good job of like zooming in their cameras and finding that there's some text scrawled on here, almost like with an Asian uh, ink uh, pen. Um, also, there's a little bit of text around the neck and there's a ribbon, etc. What my plan to do is to at least um, have some of those um, kanji characters written on the side of this thing and maybe put a ribbon on it and that'll make it at least closer to the Tsingtao uh, bottle in the film. Uh, I do have a slight snag in that there is, you make it out there, that kind of registered, what is, it's almost like a best before date. Kind of stuck with that, so I'm going to leave that toward the rear, and I'm going to call this the front of the bottle. So, what I want to do is actually put some written text on here, and I've actually hit an idea that my sister gave me that we're going to try out here. So my objective, having uh, moved this picture onto my laptop as a reference point, is I'm going to put those characters on here. Uh, I know that's a yellow one and it's in red text, but uh, what I want to do is probably use black and... But I want to see if I can match what these characters are, because the guys on the prop forum who actually did that thread said that these were actually some kind of reference. Uh, I'm sure anybody who speaks either Chinese or Japanese or Korean, whatever language that is, they probably know exactly what that says. And I, I think the prop makers were like, well, it seemed like a decent phrase, the kind of thing you would see on a uh, drinking bottle. So I'm going to try my best to replicate what we've got there. I'm going to put it right here. How you ask? Okay, now, so again, with our little best before thing at the rear, uh, it looks like the text is kind of past the shoulders here-ish. So that's about that much. And I'm going to carefully carefully. This may not look square to you, but it is to my eyes. Apply that piece there. And apply that there. So that's basically our target zone. Now, <clears throat> with a pencil, I'm going to try my best here to match what we see there on the tape. So, Bear with me here, this might be kind of difficult. Using my artistic skills, almost non-existent ones. So we got a little arm, and then it goes down and around and up, and it forms like a little, almost like a, like a treetop thing here. And then down and goes almost out, and there's almost a little I don't know, blade thing there, and it goes back up, and around, and back, and forms that little handle. There's our first character. It goes roughly here. It's a 
pretty good match for the top row. I think I'm I think I'm okay with that actually. I think that will look that will look okay. Yeah. All right. That's that part done. So there's our characters written or etched or copied or whatever on the side of the bottle. I think that'll be a decent height. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll give this a whirl. So next, with an exacto knife, we're actually going to cut this out very very slowly, very very carefully, tracing along the lines and Essentially, we're just going to peel these things out, making essentially a, um, a template. Um, it was my sister that came up with this idea, and hats off to her for that, because it's actually worked out really, really well. Um, let's make a few first cuts here. So, now this is going to be complicated. I, I would normally do like a time lapse of me like rapidly going through the whole thing. But, um, yeah, it's going to be hard, and I want to make sure I get these lines cut properly. So... Uh, let's start off with our guy that we did first, and I'm going to cut, let's see if you can see that, all right, I'm going to cut here, this straight bit here, making sure I get through the tape. By the way, if anybody's wondering, why are you doing this? It's because you can't buy these. Um, when I got my Blade Runner bottle, it actually had... A set of stickers. Because the Sing Tao bottle does not have stickers, it's just this sort of handwritten text on the darn thing, or painted text. Nobody's got like stickers you can just put onto a Sing Tao bottle recreation. So I'm doing this all by hand. It'll be interesting to see what the end result is like. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be difficult to do accurately while on camera. So I'm essentially going to follow all these little lines through here with my knife. I'll report back soon. All right, well, that was uh, fun. Uh, I think I slipped a few times, but uh, you can see there's actually a puncture there. But essentially what I've done is traced through all of these different lines here. Didn't follow specifically. It wasn't too close to the lines, but you know what? It's not critical as long as it looks like something so now what we're going to do is carefully peel back in fact let's start with that one where i made a little puncture essentially what i'm going to do is peel back the tape and it should reveal that template left over i will come back to you in a moment but basically what i'm going to do now is oh there we go there we go yeah okay so i'm going to peel back and I got a pair of tweezers here. Basically, just going to grab these bits of tape carefully, pull them out, leaving behind the shape that we have drawn in there. If you can kind of get the gist of it here, I'll just grab this other one here. Boom! So there you go. There's one of many characters I'm about to peel out. Oh dear, unfortunately, a bit of a misstep there, but you know what? That's just going to become what shape that character is now. And the last one. Here we go. Peeling. Oh, worked out very, very nicely. So, there we go. Now, I had a couple of hiccups along the way. This did not turn out too well, and the little bridge there. Anything that was not perfect, I kind of pushed and prodded and made it look at least somewhat presentable. Uh, we do have a problem that this, what was supposed to be a thin tail, has turned into more of like a leg. But again, I don't think anybody's really going to care too much. I'm sort of happy with that overall. And then the final step is going to be we're going to paint inside the lines here. And when it dries, peel off the tape and we're good. We should have some kanji-esque characters on this bottle. Um, now, what are we going to use for painting inside here? I was thinking maybe actual paint, 
but my wife recommended why don't you use some nail polish because that actually dries nicely it's uh, you can sort of chip away with your fingernails if you uh, don't have any nice uh, curves and lines like it's got and, and you can always remove it with na nail polish nail polish remover pardon me uh, so we have got some nail polish and ironically it's good old Sally Hansen has come to the rescue again um, if you've seen my Blade Runner um, uh, Johnny Walker label uh, Johnny Walker bottle video uh, Sally Hansen was actually the solution for the topper for that bottle so thank you very much to Sally Hansen I promise these are not um, sponsored videos um, now I'm going with black I know in my picture it was red text, but that was because it was a yellow bottle. I think black looks closest to what Deckard himself had, so that's what we're going to go with here. You don't want to put too much of this stuff in here. You don't want to like blob it up. You just want to paint inside there, get up to the lines, let it do its drying thing. And my wife recommends maybe give it a couple of layers, so we're going to do that. And we're just gonna basically douse all over these things it's it's basically a template once again this is the procedure and I will let you know when this is finished okay so now that we've painted in there we just gotta let that nail polish dry and then peel off the tape sounds nice and simple um, unfortunately, no, it's going to come out. You see how there's like some of it like around the head of the tadpole there is kind of blobbed up. I was trying to avoid that. You really want to keep it more like here where it's, you know, it's going to be easy to just peel off the tape and the shape will be below it. I have a feeling some of this stuff is going to be peeled or pulled off when I take the tape off. That diamond as well is a little blobular. So I think what I'm going to do... I've given a couple of areas that needed some touch-ups, touch-ups, and you can see if we if we sneak a peek down there, that's what the end product's going to look like. I think it looks okay. Um, my guess is if I when I pull, peel this off, if it takes part of some of these things off, I can kind of just spot do touch-ups with the um, Sally Hansen uh, nail polish anyway. But yeah, let's give this a good solid time to dry and harden before we try to take that tape off. All right, well, it's been a day and I thought, well, you know what? That's enough time. It doesn't take that long for nail polish to dry off. So let's remove the tape. Yeah, there we go. What do you think? Does that look official? I think that's not too bad. Unfortunate about the old uh, tadpole there, but otherwise, what do you think? Looks like an official Tsing Tao bottle from Animoid Row, I would say. Okay, all that remains now is to just stick a ribbon around the neck and put something in the center of the, the little ribbon uh, join or knot. Um, and this is a little bit tricky. Now, because this is not an actual Smirnoff Dazar bottle, which conveniently has like a little bulbous part here and a nice area to just tie a ribbon around, my uh, Metaxa bottle has just got shoulders here. So I think what I'm going to have to do, I've got the old uh, JB Weld for Glass Epoxy once again. Uh, I'm going to hold, I'm going to put a piece of ribbon around the edge, uh, you know, something along those lines there. And much like when I did the um, Johnny Walker bottle, I think I'm just going to have to put a dab here and cross it over. Unfortunately, since the Johnny Walker bottle was nice and flat and squared off, that was easy. This one's round, so I've got my uh, box that the Johnny Walker came in. I think I'm just going to lean it down there dab of glue, or epoxy, uh, some of the ribbon over, hold it in place, 
tie the other end of the ribbon around, you know, that kind of style, and then uh, hold that in place and let that dry. And then the final part is going to be something to put in the center there. Now, um, the initial pictures for the Smirna, or sorry, for the um, Tsing Tao bottle are very, it's hard to really make out a lot of details on these things. They're either, um, the one that Deckard himself gets is almost completely without any kind of detail at all, or they've got them in the background in a few shots. And worst, can they, uh, the worst part of it is the ones that are clear in those background shots have kind of got their back turned to you, so you really don't see what's there. Um, a guy on uh, Prop Summit Forum, I can't remember, I'll put a link below, uh, he originally put something that looks like a gold medallion or a brass medallion in that spot. And then some of the other folks were saying, actually, if you look at some of the images, those, uh, whatever that centerpiece is, almost looks blue in some shots. And uh, somebody actually made a very nice one out of, um, plastic or some kind of, uh, ceramic. I don't know what it was with little, uh, kanji characters on it to complete the look. And I thought, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get a little blue tab, a little, um, I don't know, out of a Tic Tac container or something, cut it off and glue it in place, and that will be my Tsing Tao bottle done and looking like the one on the prop forms. But it's turned out to be almost impossible to find a little blue piece of plastic. I thought, oh, I'll just get a Tic Tac box. They're all white, and I don't want to paint the thing. I think it's going too far. Um, and I was kind of scratching my head thinking, well, how am I going to make this thing look... Uh, it's It doesn't really matter that much, but I would like it to be as close to how other people have made theirs as possible. And then I found this other picture. Now it's very blurry, but I can make out what appears to be that medallion, that brassy circular thing. And I thought, right, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to, given this is not a Smirnoff Czar bottle to begin with, given that it's still got, you know, the wrong kind of labeling at the top, given that I've made up this writing here, and, and it's sort of just an obscure prop piece. I'm just going to stick a, an old obscure coin penny thing that I've got from my travels. I'm going to put that in there, and then basically glue the whole thing, and that's going to be my finished St. Tao bottle. So, I was going to film this whole thing. That would probably mean, since I have to hold these ribbons in place, and this piece, and all that kind of stuff for a long time, I'd end up filming for about a half an hour. I would edit out the bits, but I thought, I don't know if I've got that much room left on the camera. So I'm just going to cut now. I've told you what I'm about to do. So the next time you see it, it will be after it's been glued in place and sitting like this for, I don't know, a day or something. See you soon. And finally, Ta-da! There is my Tsing Tao bottle. It is finished, and I'm rather pleased with the end result. Give you a little close-up here, so I put that penny thing on there. Where are the... Did I get the light on it? Yeah, close enough. Uh, a little bit of um, glue spilled there, but you know what? I'm going to live with it. And I was trying my best to make the ribbon look a little different from the Johnny Walker one. Uh, I was actually going to cut it this way, but having looked at some pictures closer, the original Tsing Tao bottle did seem to just end in just an abrupt kind of a cut like that. So, again, it's it's not authentic. It doesn't have, you know, the, the proper rib shape. It's not a Smirnoff Dazar bottle. But I think that'll work okay for what my purposes are going to be. That's all right. Um, now, obviously, um, it's not going to be used for actual Tsing Tao beer, as per my other video. Uh, I need to put something in this that is a little more uh, clear, harder spirit stuff. So I guess um, whatever remains, or what, what remains for me to decide is, do I want to put, I don't know, like Bacardi rum in there, or maybe some uh, gin, or possibly vodka? I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out something, but... The Tsing Tao bottle is done, and it's going to get its uh, position with the other Blade Runner bottles in my liquor cabinet, and I'm very, very pleased. Okay, well, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.